Hello guys, this is Nick from HF Survival School. Thank you very much for joining me. As you see today, again, we have a guest, a uh, tourist from Belgium. Her name is Eponine. Hi. And we'll be hiking today the uh, Lago de Gine National Park. It is a three-day hike. We are here with backpacks. We'll be in our, staying in our tents. And we'll be seeing the uh, Black Skull uh, Lake, which is on the border of Russia and Georgia. So, so it will be a very interesting hike. And if you like, please join us. Uh, so guys, we are now, we had a small break, I had a small snack, uh, drank some water and legs, let the legs rest a little bit. I thought I would give you a small update. Here as you see, we are in a beautiful beech wood forest. All of this is untouchable, so people don't cut wood here. The only time when they cut it here is when it just naturally falls so that they clean the road. As you see, this is a quite old forest which with big trees and all covered in moss so that show tells us that uh, it is not untouched by human and it is really nice to be in such forest because you know, on the place where I have my base camp oh, people always cut trees there and it is quite sad to look so we'll keep you guys updated when something new happens or oh, when she is sad because I'm walking so slow. <laughs> Ain't that right? No. So guys, here we arrived at the half point. Decided to stop here by this bench. And we'll have a small snack, some trail mix, fill up the waters, and we'll keep on going. Six kilometers is left and it says that it will be about it will need about four hours. So guys here, me and my hacking buddy are having a chill, we did a small, uh, we ate some small, small amount of food, some trail mix and some granola bars and as you see it is quite steep and on in most places I'm not even able to place my uh, tripod so that's why I'm doing these kind of small chats when, I, when we stop and if you look She's getting even more mad because I'm so slow. Look. So, I, I'm sure there is not, not much left. The last time we checked the elevation, it was, how much was it? 1,700. 1, so there's like 300 or 250 meters left of elevation. So we should arrive there in not more than two hours. We have plenty of time until the sunset, so everything should be good. Can't wait to arrive there and I'm also getting out of my water. I have like the last half liter left, so uh, I should, I need to fill it up also. I'll keep you guys updated. At last we have arrived here. We are pretty tired. At last she got also tired. Uh, and we are at the base camp. I will take out the tents. We walked straight for like seven hours, seven and a half, maybe. Uh, there's not a lot of water from the water source. There's not a lot of water coming out. So that needs also some time to collect. But we are not in a rush. For food we have water. Now, we'll take, uh, now we will take out our tents. We will set it up so that we will be ready for the night and we can do the rest after. So guys, after thinking a lot, I came up with a solution. I don't want to put the uh, rain fly off my BV to avoid condensation. So if there will be rain, I will zip it about like that, so that the air can flow for this from the sides. I used my Teton Sports tarp, I mean a poncho. I packed it out on the back 
and on this side I put my tracking poles and pegged it out and did the same thing on the other side and this way I will have a lot of air flow so that I don't get condensation. Happen in here is uh, boiling some water. She already boiled it and she put some rice and is making breakfast. So, I mean, dinner or is it supper? I don't know. You decide. It is like five, five o'clock. As you see, it should be ready any minute. And, and we just decided to take only one stove. I mean, there is option to start fire here, but I didn't want it because you know it's a national park and then there are a lot of people, maybe. But thank God we are only two alone here. Only one guy will come, which we met on the trail. So uh, we decided to take the stove. After she finishes, then I will put my uh, uh, pasta in. Here, as you see, it was there were no clouds at all on the sky and. Suddenly, in a few minutes, you see it is in all black skies, and there, as I see, mist is coming down. This is the first stop. There are a few rooms inside this. There should be a ranger here, but uh, we are all alone here. And of course, there are beds inside, but of course, we are here to stay in our tents. There is the kitchen. Here is Eponine, our scout leader, making his food. Here is her tent and my shelter. I know it may look silly, but it is effective and at least that is the plan. So, uh, I can't wait to make some food now and eat. And as you see, our Egyptian friend also arrived. At least. This is very good. <laughs> Carry it, but uh, I will do a lot of effort if I open it and close it at the morning, so... <laughs> So here guys, Ahmad from Egypt also joined us, he was on the trail. Yeah. Say hello Ahmad. Hello. <laughs> hello so tell everyone. us a few words about you, what are you doing in Georgia? What I'm doing in Georgia, actually in Georgia, um, Georgia is a part of my trip. I, I'm cycling from Moscow to, um, to Istanbul, crossing from Tbilisi. But actually I think I will change this and I will go to Jordan from Tbilisi and uh, from Jordan to Egypt. But actually I like Georgia too much and I visit many places, not many places, but I visit like Kespigi and uh, climb like to the glacier of Gergati Glacier and come back and go to Fort Tbilisi here. And uh, also I came to here. I, I like the trail, but uh, it was uh, quite <laughs> long for one day, but it's okay and many. <laughs> It's also funny because we met on the other ice two uh, German guy and they were hiking with two egg plants mm -hmm. and I was like okay why not but <laughs> when I'm hiking I have really easy food and <laughs> even I eat not so good like you but it's really nice to have a concumber for the yeah I can think about it but you have to carry it but it's not heavy here I am inside my tent and <coughs> I'll be going to sleep now we ate some food we had a small chat and <coughs> we should have a good night because there is no rain so that is good news we plan to get up early in the morning at like 7 maybe or 8 
and leave early because there also some people arrived other hikers they allowed they arrived very late it was already dark and uh, we want to go first so see you guys tomorrow So <clears throat> it is seven in the morning. Mm, there was no rain, thank God, yesterday. But uh, it was uh, a lot of, um, you know, humidity when there's some water from from the mist coming. So that's why the uh, tent and the uh, poncho got wet. But of course, nothing got inside. Uh, I had a nice sleep. I we went to sleep at like uh, ten, as I remember, and uh, now it is seven o'clock in the morning. So we plan to leave at like eight or maximum half past eight because we want to start early. Uh, it's a nice, cool morning, and I'll get up now and we'll cook the food. Here is the shelter, as you guys can see. I got small amount of condensation uh, next to my foot, but that was not a problem. Didn't get anything wet. Now I'll break down it and uh, dry it out until I put it in my backpack. After the station of checkpoint, there is a street. Uh, yeah, I read about it. There's, those are the lakes from the uh, Big Ice Age. Mm -hmm. So we can go there, but um, the man down uh, told me that you have to ask the <coughs> soldiers here. I don't know why, but uh, actually, uh, a local guy who told me about them, I didn't know about them before coming me that there is three small lakes and the view is amazing because you are inside the mountain. mountain it was quite a lot of elevation uh, we found the water source and we filled out our water bottles because there won't be any water source other than the lake and the only option will be to boil it the elevation is uh, 2600 so there is not much left because the uh, lake is at 2800 so now we have to check to the border police because this is close to the border they are checking and registering everyone who is crossing and after we will be going straight to the lake. Now we had the small stop and now we will continue. <laughs> None of you have anything this to say the to end. the camera? <laughs> no. So it's a good way to hear. Better than yesterday. It's a bit louder. Or it will better than yesterday. I think the way to hear is better than yesterday. And um, it's a little bit foggy <laughs> and cloudy. But 
I like the way today. <laughs> yeah, it's better because when you look, you see that it was worth yeah. it. Yeah. There is some guys down. <laughs> okay, let's go now. So guys, here at last we were able to arrive at the lake. Here we are just taking the rest, chilling, having a little snack. We'll stay here for like one hour, 40 minutes, about like that, so that we still need to go to the base camp. It will be like, uh, for as the border probably said, the 40 minute, 40 minute hike. So it was worth it for sure. Now. Here I'll show it, show the lake a little bit closer in more details. What are you cooking? Do you have any magic recipe for your couscous? No, not even camping. <laughs> so guys, we decided to leave the lake. It is 6 o'clock, it will be uh, sunset in like half hour. So it was very nice, we liked it, the view was great. And we walked like one kilometer and there's two more to go until base camp. And by the way, today I want to talk about this awesome bracelet made by Alaska Paracord Designs. 
and let's get in more details and see it closer. So guys, this is the bracelet, as you see. On the buckle it has a whistle and the ferro rod is next to the buckle. It is a very high quality military grade ferro rod. As you see, in the middle it has a separate piece of paracord and inside that paracord is a piece of jute twine covered with uh, beeswax to uh, start fire and here is the uh, ceramic scraper. So overall it has 17 feet of uh, paracord and uh, to open it you need to remove uh, this uh, separate piece of paracord like this from the uh, side of the uh, fire steel. When you open up the paracord, as you see, here is the jute twine, here, covered with uh, natural beeswax. And with this ceramic uh, scraper, it is also sharpened, so you can cut it off, just like this. Here, as you see, and now you have to uh, fluff up the jute twine, so that the fibers come out and it will be easier to catch the spark. So when you use it to start the fire, you will have some extra inside to start more fires and uh, you can save it for later and also if you don't need some paracord it will just stay like this and you will have a, fu you will have a functional uh, paracord bracelet to put it on your uh, wrist until you need the paracord. Base camp. <laughs> we are in a very good mood. It was totally worth it. It was very beautiful. Uh, and uh, now I'm boiling some water to make myself some food. They ate at the lake. Mm -hmm. yeah. I decided not to. And uh, we will be staying in this uh, uh, small cottage, as you see. There are some bedrooms. And uh, yeah, we decided to do that because uh, we will be living in the morning very early. So that we can uh, take the last minibus. So that's why uh, we don't won't have extra time to take out the tents and then put it back, put them back in. So I think this will be better because we have to leave at like seven or something. Yes. Good morning, everyone. We had a very good night. We slept inside. Was it good or what? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> We had a nice solid sleep. Now it is uh, 7.20 in the morning. We have to leave at maximum 8 to make to the minibus. We are boiling some water to have some food and then we will pack, up, pack down and we will leave straight away. We have like uh, 2100 elevation to go downhill so uh, that's quite hard and the, uh, the mileage is uh, 15 kilometers. So we'll need about seven hours. <laughs> so guys, just like that, we left the shelter and the third day begins. 
there are 15 kilometers to go and quite a lot of elevation. Uh, our Egyptian friend now saw a few roebucks running, so I hope we'll be able to see them because so far we haven't seen any wild game. So we'll keep you guys updated. chilling here in the woods we have a small break as you see we came down from the mountains here we came down all the way from that side and we have a small stop here here it is very nice place the, uh, the trail is quite stiff and uh, it is going uh, on the side of the mountain so at the uh, camp uh, we were at 2,800 elevation, now it is 2,100 and we have been walking for two hours, so that's been uh, 700 elevation in two hours. Uh, but uh, we had to walk a few uphills also, so that, so that was also uh, much more distance. Uh, and now it is left uh, at about uh, 1,500, 300 is still left or 500. So that's quite a lot of uh, walking to do. We'll be down at like uh, in five hours, maybe. If we'll be f if we'll be fast four and a half. So we'll keep you guys updated. Give me the Hollywood smile.
we are very close. We arrived at the administration at last. And yeah. <laughs> That's it. It was a very pretty hard hike. <laughs> yeah. All of the uh, elevation was killing us. But every step was worth it. Every step was more difficult than the previous, but overall it was worth it. Any final thoughts, guys? It was amazing. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and you help me very much by sharing this video on your social media. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.